Yo, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna continue talking about factored form polynomial functions, and we're gonna talk about specifically how to find the leading coefficient. And as we did in the video when we were finding the degree, we're just gonna do pure examples to uh, really drive the point home. So let's say you're given a uh, polynomial function in factored form like this, and you have to find the leading coefficient. So you have to visualize this being expanded so you would foil all these brackets and what would be that term that's in front of the x with the highest exponent. And the way you do that is you first take whatever is in front of all of these brackets. So whatever number is here, notice how there's nothing there so there's like this one. So you would take the one and then all you do is you multiply it by the leading coefficient of each of the brackets. So the leading coefficient here in 2x plus 3 is the 2. The leading coefficient here in x minus 4 is this 1 that's in front of the x. So that's 1. And then the leading coefficient here is the negative 3. Notice how it's uh, written in a different way. So it's this is the same. 1 minus 3x is the same as negative 3x plus 1. So negative three would be the leading coefficient. And then you just multiply them together. So one times two times one times negative three would give you negative six. So if you were to expand these three brackets, then the leading coefficient in the expanded form would be negative six. Next example, we got y is equal to negative three x, two x plus one, and then one minus x. So this x here, let's put it in its own bracket like that. So what do we do? We take the number that's always in front, so in this case there's a negative 3, and then multiply it by the leading coefficient of each bracket. So the leading coefficient of this bracket, there's a 1 in front of the x, so that's 1. The leading coefficient here is 2. And the leading coefficient here, if we rewrite this and put the x in front, it would be negative x plus 1 that's the same as one minus x. So the leading coefficient is this negative one here, or the negative one here in the bracket. So that would be negative one. Multiplying all these, negative three times one times two times negative one would give us positive six. So if we took this uh, polynomial function, expanded it, the leading coefficient would be positive six. Next example, y is equal to negative two, two x minus one squared times three x plus one times x minus four squared. Same procedure applies, so the number in front is a negative two. Now, taking the leading coefficient of the bracket is two, but because this whole bracket is squared, then we have to square that leading coefficient. Because if you think about it, if we have two x minus one times two x minus one, because there's two of them, when you multiply these two together, you'd have two times two. So the leading coefficient would be four, hence why we take the leading coefficient two in the bracket and then we have to square it where we would get four as well for the leading coefficient. And then moving on to the next bracket, the leading coefficient of this bracket is three and the leading coefficient of this bracket is one and it's also squared, so we would square it. So this simplifies to negative two times four times three times one squared, which is just one. So negative two times four is negative eight times three is negative 24. So if we were to take these and fully expand them, the leading coefficient would be negative 24. Next example, we got y is equal to negative five x squared, one minus three x squared, and then in brackets, two x squared plus three x minus four to the power of three. So, the first thing we do is we take the number in front. That's going to be multiplied to get the leading coefficient. And now this x squared here, this is like in brackets squared. So the leading coefficient of the x is just one and it's being squared, so we would include that. The leading coefficient in this bracket is the negative three and that's also being squared, so we would square that. And then notice how in this bracket we have a larger polynomial. Usually we've been uh, dealing with uh, binomials. Here we have a trinomial. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 to the power of 3. Very similar to how we found the degree. You only take the leading coefficient of 2. And since that whole thing is to the power of 3, you would take that to the power of 3. So negative five times one squared is just negative five, nine. So actually, you know what? Let's rewrite these again. Negative five, one, 
negative 3 squared is 9, and then 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So um, we would have negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. Negative 45 times 8 would give us negative uh, 360, I believe. Yeah, I think that, that should work. Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40 times 9 is negative 360. So that would be our leading coefficient if we took this polynomial and expanded it. So you're catching the pattern here. So basically, really simple, all you're doing is taking the number in front and then taking the leading coefficient of each bracket and if there is a bracket that is to the power of something, you would take that leading coefficient and take it to the power. And it's just a simple way for you to find what the leading coefficient would be if you were to expand this polynomial instead of fully expanding it and going through all the FOIL and doing all that work and then getting the leading coefficient. So, so far we're able to get the leading coefficient and the degree of a polynomial in factored form. The only thing that's left to figure out is how to get that constant term or the y-intercept and that's the most simple part. So, that's in the next video.